Coming up tonight, it's an industry that once was a big money maker for practitioners and the country. Persons coming from near and far just to witness the sounds and sights of Bahamian music. But over the years, the industry experienced a decline. While the artists increased, the struggle became real. Tonight, a candid discussion on the Bahamian music industry. Beyond the Headlines starts now. Bahamian musicians and entertainers are trying to rebuild what used to be a lucrative industry. Good evening, everyone. I'm Clint Watson, and welcome to the show. Well, it's been the topic of discussion for many years, but there have been no clear answers. Why does it appear difficult for Bahamian musicians and entertainers to survive and make a living in their craft? When we look back in the 50s and 60s, it was a much sought after and lucrative industry. In fact, many of the big names joined the scores of tourists that would visit the Bahamas just to witness performances. But times have changed. Well, please welcome my guest tonight. He is a musical historian, Ronald Sims, musicians Fred Ferguson, Sila Poitier, and Kevin Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Great to have you all. Good evening. Thank I you, feel Brian. I feel so special to have all of this great music. I, mean, I just feel like we can just break out into song and dance with just everybody here. But let me first of all congratulate all of you for the work that you've done in paving uh, Bahamian music and really taking it to the next level. Our country is better because of it. But this conversation, we, we sadly have to have this conversation so far in, in the game of what we do as music in the industry. We're now, instead of talking about going to the next level, still trying to discuss how we can make this become sustained. Um, what happened? I always hear people talk about back in the days, people would come to these famous clubs and they would, they would pay big money to see the Bahamian artists. Artists were being uh, performing every night. I mean, and sometimes three and four venues just because of the demand. What happened to that till now where we have artists sitting home and can't get a job? Well, Ronald, well, well Clint, let me thank you for the new title of historian <laughs> and the title to, to, to my resume. Well, a couple of things happened. And we have to appreciate a couple of things that were not in place back then in what we call the glory days of Bahamian entertainment. During those times, the hotel industry was seasonal for one. Mm -hmm. They opened only in the winter, November through April. Mm. Okay. And so there were a lot of neighborhood nightclubs, locally owned institutions, Cat and Fiddle, Zanzibar, Silver Slipper, uh, Club Blue Note, Flowers, you name them, they were all over the place, Jungle Club, uh, everywhere there was entertainment. And so the hotels, even though they were open from November to April, they closed after dinner seating. Mm. So by 10, 11 o'clock, those hotels were dark. So the guests had to spill out Somewhere into else. the communities mm. for, for entertainment. In addition to that, cruise ships coming to the islands, three miles out of port, they had to shut down wow. all of their operations, their casinos, their restaurants, their bars. So the passengers on those cruise ships had to spill out into the island to eat, to be entertained. And then the hotels came. They became year-round operations. The same musicians that were in those Zanzibars and Cat and Fiddles moved into the hotels, and the hotels, of course, made them offers they couldn't refuse, better working conditions, better mm -hmm. salary, blah, 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 blah. And then to put the nail in the coffin, the government opened up the cruise business to open their bars and restaurants in port. Mm. That was the final nail in the coffin Wow! for the death of the industry as we know it today. Wow. Is there, any, is there the ability to still get back in this game and, and, and allow our musicians, particularly those who are around today and want to find work, to be able to become, make this sustainable? Well, I, I came into business later than Ronald, and so my history is not as deep as his, but I did come in at a time at the crossroads mm -hmm. when um, the industry was still viable 
Because I came in when Sandals now used to be Balmoral, right? And Breezes used to be the ambassador, right? The ambassador club. Ambassador so we had a, we even had a Playboy yeah. club, girls mm -hmm. with the bunny tails and all that. Oh lord, wow! And yeah. so um, I came in at the time, and all of those things were still there, and entertainment still meant something. Meaning that um, I didn't, I've never seen the Cat and Fiddle, so that shows you my crossroads. Mm -hmm. But bands were recognized for their talents, first of all. They were given the respect. We, we were able to eat in the hotels wherever we wanted. We signed checks. Every band had a room in the hotel that they were. Wow. So this was the, what I came into now. What made us what we were was the respect for the craft. Even though, you know, people call us musicians or whatever, but we respected the craft, we, we practiced, we got our acts together. Nowadays, we have instant superstars. Mm -hmm. You get into a little closet with a, with a computer and you expect to get that same treatment that yeah. we got then. It didn't work. You had to earn your way in. Bands wouldn't let you in, uh, hotel owners or club owners wouldn't let you in to play into their clubs unless you were at a certain standard. Nowadays, anything goes. And so the industry cannot, can, cannot grow until we take it back to basics. And that I think that is what's holding us back today. Let me ask you, Sila, because you, you're one of our, uh, our younger musicians who actually took this on as a profession. You went, studied music, um, came back with a, with, with, a, with, a, with a perfection on an instrument that most people don't know. If you see her play the bass, it's amazing. Um, but yet, are you able to find a place for yourself in, 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 in your own country and sustain by doing what it is that you study? No. Well, upon returning home, a very notable musician and cultural icon, he actually told me that nobody in this country really cares about your talent. It's all about business. And that's ironic because in his time, it was actually all about mastering your craft and mm -hmm. it was all about your talent. And it wasn't about how easily one can take advantage of you or make money off of you as long as you don't speak up for yourself and speak up for the rights of other musicians as it relates to how they're being treated working for these people. And you know, back in the day, like he spoke about, you had the Marine Duvalier, you had Eloise Lewis, you had George Simonette, you had Charlie Adamson, you had all these people considered legends in our country today. Mm -hmm. But politicians and even some musicians of yesteryear like to pretend as if they don't know the reason why the Bahamas has the brand that it has today. Mm -hmm. The Bahamas, why it's such a brand name, is solely or was solely because of the contributions that musicians and artisans made. But they also had a government and a ministry of tourism mm -hmm. that made it their prerogative to put them at the forefront. So they had an international platform to be showcased all around the world. And people didn't come here just for sun, sand, and sea. A lot of tropical islands already have sun, sand, and sea. The Jamaica, the Cuba, Brazil, everybody. Mm -hmm. Now Florida, you go right to Florida. Exactly. But what put us on the map was a platform for us to be able to showcase our talents to the world and we need that to return without any political bias because the reason why it is the way it is today single-handedly it was destroyed by the politicians a lot of people wow. don't like to say it but, it but, is but it's the truth yes dean what say you about the industry where we are now um the industry it has been in a decline for for decades um i think technology um education exposure all these different factors kind of came together and it's been slowly dwindling down to minimal like hotels they want smaller bands there's no casino shows anymore mm -hmm. there's no venues to display the the musical talent and it's it's economics and it's i sometimes i say this to my friends that um the tourism industry might be stifling our culture in a way. Good yes. point. Good Agreed. point. Mm -hmm. Good right. point. Agreed 100 yeah. Actually, a very powerful point. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Because That's loaded. <laughs> we, we are more into the numbers exactly. that we get on shore yes. via the yes. cruise ships, via the uh, hotels, yes. than we are into causing those people who visit to have a Bahamian experience. Yeah. But I think, right. it's more, I think it's a little bit deeper than that because if you look at the songs we write, 
it's all geared towards tourists. Yeah, the tourism yeah. industry is part of the death of this industry. We everything is come to the Bahamas. We are beautiful. You listen to the songs that we write, and we're killing it. And it's all towards tourism, and so at that point is very. very we're going to talk more about that. We're going to take a break when we come back. We're going to talk about that. What we thought would be the industry to to uplift and to expand is in the musician industry. It's actually killing it. We'll talk about it when we come back. Stay close to watching Beyond the Headlines. Welcome back. We're having a candid discussion on the music industry in the Bahamas, the Bahamian music industry. Where has it gone? How, why has it died out? Uh, when we hear about these great stories in the past, and now we're seeing so many Bahamian musicians struggling. And of course, we have some great people here who could talk to us about it. Ronald Sims, Fred Ferguson, Sila Poitier, and Kevin Dean. Before we went to a break, Kevin Dean, you dropped a, a loaded statement on us uh, attributing the death of this industry to tourism. Um, and and I, wanted, I wanted to expand more on that because people feel as if the tourism industry is a platform for entertainers and musicians. But we're seeing, I don't know if, we're, if we can call it too much of a compromise with, with tourist operators on what they want or what they don't want to spend. And, we, and, and we're just compromising with them to, to say they're existing here, but we're killing our own. Exactly. We are, we are folding to the market demands, I guess. There's a supply and demand. They want us to supply this kind of entertainment. Therefore, we focus on supplying that kind of entertainment and not focusing on developing our own, our own culture and you know, building our own brand, as they would say now, in the millennials. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, that, that, that market side is only, I think, a small aspect of the entirety because there's also other aspects like education, like music education mm -hmm. is, is dwindled down to they want a choir, they want, yes. as a music teacher, you play piano. Or a horn player for John Canoe. Or the mm -hmm. horn player for John Canoe. That's or another show we it's had to very, do. It's, it's it's everything is being limited. Mm -hmm. due to, I guess, mm -hmm. the market demand, and we're not paying attention or appreciating the actual art that used to happen mm -hmm. with creative souls like ourselves and yes. creative people. And I, I want to go back to the point Kevin is on. When you talk about tourism playing a major role in the decline of the industry, there was a time when the native shows were the thing in this country, the drum beat. The, the, the king and knights. I mean, there were shows all over the place. But then the cruise ships who supplied the passengers for those shows started making demands. It became business to them how much they could get out of a head. Yes. Right. They want to buy the show for you, let's say $10, but they're selling it on board for $50. Right. Right? Right. They want to determine the time of your show. You've got all the expenses. And um, the cruise ships are making all the money. Then there were the cab drivers on top of that that had to get a dollar ahead and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so the shows became prohibitive for the operators to put on. Because yeah. wow. they were presenting, but, but they were not making yes, any money. Yes. But, but also, also the musicians were at fault too. We have a big part to play in this because we got nasty and lousy and come into work late and want to be drunk on the job and fight the band on, uh, the club owner and talk rude to the tourists. So all these parts together make up a whole. Of course, Death Ronald is absolutely correct because we've both owned clubs. We've worked in clubs where cab drivers will say, we'll bring you these people on top of each head for the fares they got. We, the clubs, had to pay them on top of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so they got say $5 a head, plus the club gave them $2 for every person that they brought. So all of these things add up to the decline. Of course, there's the artistic side and the tourism side, but then we, the artists, too, got to take responsibility for some of the decline that's going on. Should we not, as a country, have a, a location, a theater or whatever, or, or, or a production house, that we continuously run Bahamian entertainment and shows on regularly? For example, Let's say Wednesday nights, I can go and see Sila and jazz, Bahamian jazz, whatever. Thursday night, I can go and get John, um, the, the, the Gombe or yeah, Calypso yeah. groups. Monday night, Sunday nights, I can get gospel. Should we have I something where we can... I talk about this from her perspective, <laughs> but just look at the All National Arts Center and that answers your question. What the... We have a Shirley Street no, Theater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Before we get there, where's the national cultural policy? Yeah. True. Let's speak to True. this. Yeah, so, True. I mean, the main True. things that we know, to be, listen, all of our ministers have traveled around the world and seen what 
happens in these different places. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the definition of tourism is people visiting another country to experience another culture. So when I go to Miami, I'm a tourist. Even though I take it for granted, I go there so often. Right, right, right. But I am a tourist there. When I go to their clubs and listen to their artists, I'm enjoying their culture. It should be the exact same thing that happens here. When I look at the fact that I just came back from New York, you go to New York, people go to New York to do the white when you go to Manhattan. They want to see the shows, the Broadway. No and those things are sold out year round, mm. every night, yeah, sometimes yeah. two shows a night. Yeah, because people want, and they spend up $250, $350 yeah. for a ticket, yeah. one ticket, yeah. because they want to experience yeah. Yeah. going to New York. You, you have not been to New York until you've seen a Broadway mm -hmm. show. That's right. So why would not, our, and most of our tourists are high end tourists. Yeah. They spend a lot of money coming to the destination. Yeah. Would they not spend at least fifty to hundred dollars to see a Bahamian authentic show? Yeah. And the hotels will be happy. To this will take it out there. Yeah, there's some place for you to go. But we shut down Bay Street at sunset and we pee on the street. <laughs> I'd also like True. to say there's there are two there are two major showrooms that exist now on this island and Paradise Island, and they are empty. There's no Bahamian entertainment like production where there's involves m multiple entertainment, musicians, dancers, comedians, right. magicians. Those shows have totally disappeared. Why? That's a very good question. Well, I don't but you, you don't even have to go that far as the showrooms. The hotels in this country used to be littered with native bands, mm -hmm. trios, mm -hmm. quartets, Everywhere you, go. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, music. They mm -hmm. still, they still have the, those in in a certain sense. Well, well, you walk I mean, through Atlantis, you'll like, see a two piece Marina band. Village. Huh? Yeah, you'll see some you singers there. Maybe out on the beach. Guitar. What are they playing? Scrap in comparison exactly. to what oh. we're talking about. And, and, and for the most part, they're playing in national music. They're not yeah. playing indigenous music. Nassau true. Beach true. Very true. That's that's true. Nassau Beach used to have like four bands upstairs there. Down at the, in the thing with the rotating bar yeah. uh, thing outside by the pool, um, Ambassador Beach, the exact same thing, Balmoral Beach. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is what they what we're talking about now in, in comparison is scrap. And a lot of these, a lot of the groups and bands that are playing in these resorts, I'm not knocking anybody, but a lot of them are not your main headliners that you would know because these people don't want to pay that. They want to find, yeah. a, okay, let me find a group who can play the same kind of thing and I can get them for half the see, price. Now you're coming they, to the point you I see? said earlier. So they try to, they, the they get these knockoff the people. Artist, the yeah. artist is part of the problem because we also undercut each other. Each other, yeah. We undercut each other because if I go there and say, and, and let's say I am the qualified one, I'll do it for 300. Right. The unqualified person will say I'll do it for 50 or the police band. Military yeah. bands, have you all see me? <laughs> but another part Definitely. of the problem. That's is the problem. For the most part, the artists practicing today, young and old, do not appreciate the art of entertainment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're lacking in what it means to entertain, entertain. Yes. people yes. from different walks of life, from different nationalities. Yes. They don't know how to relate to them. Yeah. And I think that's because they don't spend enough time studying their craft. Absolutely. They just figure, oh, I have a bit of talent. Let me just go find and make some money off of it and let me play. And it ends up hurting the industry. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're wrapping up. When we come back, what is the solution? We're going to put some solutions out there. Not that we haven't done it before, but we're going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hopefully, maybe this will be the time it clicks to somebody right there. Stay close. We'll be back to wrap up. Welcome back. We're wrapping up about a very informative discussion today talking about the Bahamian music industry, um, the fact that it's been dying. Well, before we wrap up, how do we resurrect this? Is, can we revive this industry to a place where it becomes a place where people can sustain themselves in this career? Do you believe that can happen? All things are possible with the, with the will. <laughs> All things are possible. True. If, you, have to be able to do, you have to have the will to do it. Um, there are persons like myself and Ronald who have tried to our last penny mm -hmm. to run establishments, to hire musicians. The, the road is too rough to make it happen, the red tape. Mm. You know, you, you cannot bring an instrument in here unless you buy three of them now, because including the new VAT. Wow. The cost of it with the duty and the VAT. The deposit to get a light turn on in a club is twice the highest bill of the previous owner. It's crazy. You know, so those and of us- And general access to capital. You cannot, yeah. cannot finance a nightclub 
a restaurant, a gas station in this country, the banks will refuse you for yeah, yeah. Their yeah. policy is yes. that they don't finance those kinds so of So the will. Wow. Without the will by the leaders to see the importance, right now we don't even train musicians. The CELA is a graduate of the University of the Bahamas. They don't really train you on the art of music. They're training teachers to teach, to teach it's music. It's, that's so, very so, true. So it's a circle. It's very true. See, there's there's always right this now. focus on but what can they do for us and how can they make it easier for us. But there is a huge underground movement of young Bahamians who are actually doing it without the help of the clubs and the, mm -hmm. the big uh, hoteliers mm -hmm. and all those big venues. There's an underground movement that when you, people like myself and Sue, we go off to school and we see these things happening and we learn and we get educated and we come back and then we see how things are actually happening here and they're not quite up to standard. So like we, we, we get together underground mm -hmm. and eventually, hopefully, that underground we'll will bubble up. Yeah. After the gaming the industry, yes. so yeah. why can't happen yes. with yes. exactly. the Exactly, music. And I yeah. think that's, that that there, I think is, is a good solution. The fact that people just got to begin doing it and, and, the and church. begin supporting it. And the church too, of course, yeah. of course. I mean, I I I, know, I have all people know having a gospel group. Um, you got you know, when it comes to the church world, you better do it for love, for love, for love, <laughs> love of country. Because <laughs> the minute you charge, you being you're blaspheming against yes. God. Yes. I need charge. Yes. Yes. But we've had to for my group, we've had to make our ability to pay bills through doing work. For the other market, the that tourism correct, market, yeah. for the cultural market, out of the going, country, oh, out of the country. Yep. we travel a lot mm -hmm. just to be able to sustain our bills mm -hmm. um, because people appreciate it there yes. rather than they appreciate it here. No question. Um, and and we started. We had a, we had a very good run starting out last year. Um, during the, it started out during this during the Christmas, doing music for the for Atlantis. They got some. They got two uh, the gospel groups, and we were rotating week after mm -hmm. week, and mm -hmm. that was so sustainable. Yes. Yeah. And then Atlantis changed executive management, and, and they just stopped out. the whole <laughs> thing, See? and it went out the window. And here was with two gospel groups who were able to now be able to do some things right. because they were being they were working and doing gospel music yeah. and doing Christmas music and then management changed and instead of because it was not an informed policy yes. go yes. back to policy mm -hmm. again yes. mm -hmm. the, 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 the the company could decide we're not going to do it we'll, yeah. we'll just go away with it yeah. rather than there being policy do we need policy and this is where I think government should come in yes, right. that informs and says to all of these hotel owners other people that you have to Implore X amount of uh, of culture in what you national, do. You're going to be in our country. You got to do it. That's been a position we've been putting on the table over the years. When you get into these heads of agreements and you're giving away you half go. of the country there in concessions, there then you know, there's got to be some stipulation in these agreements that you're going to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And X, Y, and Z is going to hire Kevin. It's going to hire Sheila. Yeah. It's going to hire yeah. Fred. Yeah. It's going to hire. <laughs> Indigenous behavior in forms yes, of entertainment. Yes. Yeah, no, I, unless I, we do no, that, it's not going to happen. I totally agree. We need that informed because we always see these agreements yeah. that you that you know they're going to donate a one point something million a year to charity. Well, what we need you to yeah. do is instead of giving it to charity, put some behaviors to work. Let our culture grow it, and at the end of the day, you still reap the reward from it as as a hotel. Yes. You still benefit because when you hire these people, you're going to cause your 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 your, your, your visitors to grow. Because people are going to come to the country yeah. and it's going to grow. But, but then, the, and you say policy, the cultural policy has to go across the political divide. Because what we've been doing is changing it every five years. Yeah. When the PLV wins, there you go. they bring something, they have come in and say it can't happen, and this is what happened next. And so the policy has to be, we have to determine that this is what's going to happen for entertainment in the next 10 years, yes. no matter who comes into power, yeah. and allow it to grow. Otherwise, we've been going like 10 steps forward, 15 steps backwards. Good food for thought. Listen, thank you all for joining me today. and bringing some information to our people and bringing this conversation back into the public domain. We appreciate it and appreciate hopefully we'll see some change. Well, Thank you, you know, all. You're a musician, you understand Exactly, I, I know well. it all too well. <laughs> That's our show. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here on our next show. Until then, I'm Clint Watson. Have a great weekend. See you back here on Monday.